I, like everyone else, have those nights where you think about the ultimate questions of reality. Uh, I'm not going to tell you mine to first. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about not what you well, not when you're trying to solve physics problems yeah, that know. you know can be solved. You're yeah. having some fun with it, yeah. but when you really think deeply about about the nature of reality, what life is all about, what consciousness is all about, what your you, your family. Mm -hmm. The existence. How do you frame those kinds of questions? Well, I I do tend to tr frame them in a in a scientific vein on the whole. Obviously, uh, you know the question "Why am I here?" comes up often, not just here, but in general. <laughs> but but the one question that really more and more drives me is this question of 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 whether the universe has to be the way it is. I I, I mean I'm more and more intrigued, and the question of can we answer that question. Can't is there just one possible set of physical laws that work? That really has been the guiding principle of science since Galileo, I think. And we're more and more coming around to the idea that maybe it's not true. I mean, it's I think it's a profound revelation, and it's a profound shift in the way I think scientists are thinking about what what science can even do in principle. But how do suppose that happens? Suppose you are now convinced, which I know you're not, mm -hmm. but if you were, that you really Science can never get to that ultimate, single, non-unique uh, uh, solution. Never. Non-unique solution. You can never get to, Science can never get to the unique solution, that all you have is a landscape of non-unique solutions. How, how does that make you feel? What is, do you have a different attitude towards science? Well, it's, it, it, I think it would be it's depressing. I mean, I, I, think, I think we've all been... Maybe maybe the scientists of a hundred years from now won't be so depressed, but sociologically, I grew up in a wanting to figure out why the universe has to be the way it is, not why it has to be some other way. Mm -hmm. And I think so. At some level, I would like to know why the universe is the way it is, and that really means how the universe is the way it is. But uh, that's what that's what drove me to 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 try and to try and be a scientist. I, I'm I'm governed, I'm driven by the possibilities. What's possible out there? Not what's practical, as my wife would remind me, what's possible. And, and so I want to know the landscape of possibilities. And what I'd like to think is that I can predict that the universe has to be a certain way. And if I can't predict that, that, that certainly is a disappointment to me. But the universe is the way it is, whether we like it or not, which is the other important thing that science has told us in the last few hundred years that I wish more people understood. That if that's the way the universe is, I'll live with it and I'll try and work with it, Okay. At the same time, I think it's also possible that it may even be worse than what we just said. There may be more than just a landscape of possibilities. It could be that the ultimate description of reality is not determinable, even in principle. It, it, it's not that we have a theory that makes that predicts lots of different possible universes and, 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 and we could be in any of them. We may not be able to ever show that which universes it predicts. It could be mathematically incomplete. It could be that the fundamental theory is not solvable, even in principle, as a mathematical possibility. But, but that's not just a problem of our limited intellect. No. It, that's we, built into the nature of the mathematics. It's built into mathematics. There are certain things that, that are true in mathematical systems which cannot be proven to be true. Maybe the universe is like that. I, I've, re I've thought about that recently in my ultimate uh, w stage of depression, I guess, thinking about how bad it could possibly get. But it could be that way. Nevertheless, you know, that doesn't give us hope. You don't give up hope because there's still, even if you don't understand that ultimate reality, if you wish, the basis of reality, there's still an incredible amount to understand about the universe, which I think we will. We, every year we discover new and wonderful things about the universe that, that are relevant. And understanding, we have to realize that understanding the nature of quantum mechanics and gravity and all that isn't going to eventually have an, an iota of impact on understanding important things like why why consciousness may arise in humans, Fun, it, so it's even a theory of everything, as a friend of mine likes to say, is still a theory of very little. It's profoundly important to understand how the universe evolved the way it did and what the ultimate nature of reality is. But the reality of you and I in this room is equally important. I would love to know um, what it means to be conscious, what consciousness is. Can a computer become conscious? Uh, which I happen to believe is the case, and I happen to believe it's not. Yeah, and 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 what's great is I hope that time will tell, and 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 I bet 
when and when when we build a computer that's conscious, I'm going to write you a letter and say I told you so. <laughs> or the computer will tell me <laughs> so. Exactly.